Today we're talking about the border, again. Because it's been, what, a few hours since the last time I talked about it? Man, did a cascade of updates fall into our laps over the last 48 hours though. Between the firing of DHS Secretary Nielsen and replacing her with Stephen Miller Light, all of the goals of Stephen Miller with half the atrocities. And on the other side, having a federal judge ruling that the Trump administration can no longer hold asylum seekers in Mexico. Yeah, between those two things, my phone has been shaking like it's going through withdrawals. So what is happening? Well, all this stems from one common problem that this administration has tried to solve by throwing solutions at the wall and seeing which ones stick. Unfortunately for them, the ones that have stuck have quickly been scraped off by judges. The problem itself is incredibly simple. This administration wants to stick to a policy of detaining every undocumented immigrant, from asylum seeking families to people who are in the deportation process locked up for the entirety of their trials and tribulations, or as long as they can keep them. The problem comes in when ICE detention centers have turned on their sorry no vacancy light for months, and yet we're still bringing people in. At this point, arresting undocumented immigrants has become like continuing to fill an overflowing bath. The surge of migrants crossing into the country is overwhelming both Border Patrol agents and also the facilities that are designed to hold them. The situation is so dire that border agents are now just releasing illegal immigrants into the country. Today we're talking about these two updates as they relate to this specific problem. First, the federal judge's decision. Why can't America force asylum seekers to stay in Mexico? This decision, from the case of Innovation Law Lab v. Nielsen, might want to update that name, came from Trump's rival, the Northern District of California Court. So what does this law say about sending asylum seekers to Mexico until the courts determine whether their asylum application is approved? Let's go to the decision. The decision placed two hurdles in front of this administration. The first can be summed up by a Trump tweet. Tweeting, quote, a Ninth Circuit judge just ruled that Mexico is too dangerous for migrants, so unfair to the U.S., out of control. Yeah, that's not too far from the truth. The decision says that the Department of Homeland Security lacks sufficient protections against aliens being returned to places where they face undue risk to their lives or freedoms. It's not surprising that there would be a law against taking asylum seekers and putting them into a different, equally dangerous situation. Let's just say though, hypothetically, Juarez, Mexico, where most of these asylum seekers are, suddenly became really, really safe. Problem solved? According to this judge, not really. The Department of Homeland Security was moving asylum seekers to Mexico under a part of the Immigration and Naturalization Act that provides, in the case of an alien who is arriving on land from a foreign territory contiguous to the United States, the Secretary of Homeland Security may return the alien to that territory pending a proceeding. Now this debate gets way too nuanced for anyone who doesn't do this for a living to care. But if you explore the Supreme Court's interpretation of a subsection of a subsection of a subsection, yeah, how'd you miss that? It says that these contiguous territory provisions don't apply to those who are either clearly and beyond a doubt entitled to admission, or those whose application for admission will be evaluated by an administrative law judge. That category of people includes asylum seekers. Because of this, Federal Judge Richard Seberg in San Francisco stopped the administration from forcing asylum seekers to wait in Mexico. Now due to that ruling, this Friday the administration will have to stop sending asylum seekers to Mexico. So expect a ton of buses to leave detention centers Thursday night. Fortunately for the Trump administration, this doesn't affect all of the asylum seekers who were previously sent to Mexico. At the same time, the Department of Homeland Security just lost a pressure valve to release some of the excess bodies that they couldn't hold in detention centers. Of course, the president can appeal this decision and there is no doubt in my mind that he will. The administration in this case argues that you can make people without valid paperwork wait in Mexico, which is true, but this judge interpreted the asylum claim as superseding that. I look forward to hearing what the Supreme Court will eventually have to say. 
But this brings us to the other dramatic thing that just happened. Let's stay on the border crisis if we can. Homeland Security Secretary Kirsten Nielsen has resigned. We know that. Enter Border Protection Chief Kevin McAleenan to fill her spot. Ah, yes, Trump's cabinet. The one sector of the economy with high unemployment. Most people right now are asking Kevin McAleenan. Who is he? And more importantly, how do you say his last name? How do you say your last name? McAleenan. Okay, Kevin. Yes. All right. <laughs> Kevin <laughs> is the commissioner of the U.S. Customs and Border Protection Agency. Yes, before this job, he was the commissioner of the U.S. Customs and Border Protection Agency, which gives us the opportunity to see what he thinks and how he would solve this overflow problem we talked about earlier. He's blamed a legal loophole for the increase in migrant families looking to cross the border and said the law meant that there are no consequences for family and their children who are apprehended. It doesn't take much reading between the lines to see already, uh oh, this is not going to be a good change for immigrant rights. He was one of the main people behind the implementation of family separation. But before you start booing, there was an interesting legal reason for those family separations that he'd like to change, and I of course mean interesting in the most sociopathic of senses. The so-called Flores Agreement dates back to 1997 and stipulates that children generally need to be released after 20 days. As you can imagine, that's going to be a problem if you have a gotta catch em all immigration policy. This led to parents getting kept in detention centers while their kids were moved to the Department of Homeland Security to be treated as unaccompanied minors. Yeah, a real dick move right there. Of course, Trump reversed this family separation policy leading to reports like, The immigrant shelter in the valley isn't the only one seeing an influx of immigrants released by ICE. As Channel 5's Valerie Gonzalez reports, this is all part of a coordinated release. Well, that should help with the problem of detention center overcrowding. Don't worry though, because we shifted over to detaining families together. This leads to a fascinating development that blows my mind in the context of recent episodes I've done. Immigrant parents and children must be released after three weeks. ICE straps an electronic ankle monitor on the mother, which allows immigration agents to track her location. Three weeks? That's it? There's a higher turnover rate than Trump's cabinet. Wow, breaking news. This problem is worse than I thought. Holding families for three weeks is still leaving this system overflowing. It's so bad that a few weeks ago, ICE Union sent a scathing letter to Trump calling for Border Patrol to release migrants directly to clear space. And when ICE is telling you to detain fewer people, that's when you know you might have a problem. That's like the Department of Homeland Security saying, uh, maybe a little less security. Now by all accounts, these family detention centers aren't doing a great job letting families out on time. But still, that's the law of the land. This is where our new DHS leader sees a solution to the overflowing bathtub problem we were talking about earlier. We simply close that loophole that sees families who bring children into the country being released after 20 days. These increases in demographic changes in crossings are direct responses to the vulnerabilities in our legal framework that have become well known to smugglers and migrants. These weaknesses in our laws now represent the most significant factors impacting border security and include the inability to keep families together while they complete expeditious and fair immigration proceedings. Instead, crossing with a child is a guarantee of a speedy release. Now, ignoring the ethical implications of thinking of detention centers as punishment rather than places to hold people until their trial, this raises an interesting point. His push is to make it so that you can detain families with children for the months or years it will take to figure out their asylum claims. And you might be thinking, Stephen, how does making it so you can detain people for longer periods of time ease the overflowing bathtub? To keep this metaphor going, it would be like putting a stopper in the drain. Well, Secretary Mikulinen would argue that right now if you bring a kid across the border, that's like traveling with a get out of jail free card. So we're incentivizing families to cross the border together. 
Of course, this brings up the obvious question of what are we going to do with even more people being detained for longer periods of time? And the answer is probably release the families, because with this growing overcrowding problem we're talking about, you got to let some people out. They're the most expensive people to hold. And the fact that a recent American Immigration Council report found that among family members applying for asylum, 96% of asylum applicants attended all of their immigration court hearings. Now before we go on, I've never heard of the American Immigration Council, and 96%? That sounds way too good to be true. So I searched for them using my media bias tools and found that they're left of center, which is on par with the New York Times, and their factual reporting rate is high. So wow, 96% show up to all of their court hearings. Now Obama pushed hard to make the exact same keeping families detained together indefinitely change back in 2015, but he failed because the court said Flores stays. We'll see if anything changes in this round though. His other focus is on and the disparate treatment under the Trafficking Victims Protection Reauthorization Act, which allows for children arriving from Mexico and Canada to be repatriated, but not from other countries, including those in Central America, regardless of the views of those governments. Basically, if an unaccompanied minor shows up in America, they're going to be put into health and human services care until they can be linked up with foster care or family members. Now, I know some of you were probably expecting to hear deportation. That currently isn't in the cards for kids without families who are not from contiguous countries. There's this contiguous country thing again. Why were all these agreements written before planes and boats? Secretary Nielsen, before she resigned, addressed this when she wrote a letter to Congress starting with, I'm writing you with an urgent request. Because there's no better way to not seem like spam than sending a written letter marked urgent. She did spell Department of Homeland Security properly though, so let's crack it open. Now look out, because we have a long quote coming, but it's simple and pretty interesting. We need the authority to treat all arriving migrant children equally. Currently we can reunite many unaccompanied children from Mexico with their families and return them home when appropriate, but we are legally unable to do so for kids from non-contiguous countries. The result is that hundreds of Central American children come into our custody each day, await transfer to HHS care, and ultimately are placed with a sponsor in the United States. This serves as another dangerous pull factor. I love that they decided not to go with the we could be reuniting Central American families argument, and instead went with the the ability to get into our foster care system is incentivizing unaccompanied minors argument. I mean, you don't always have to take the moral low ground. So that's what's going on at the border right now. Pending appeal, we can no longer send asylum seekers to Mexico, and our new DHS chief is focusing on increasing detention times for families being held together, and pushing for programs to return unaccompanied minors to the countries they came from. Until probably an hour from now when all of this changes again, thank you and that's all I have to say about that. Hello YouTube, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to support independent nonpartisan news, remember to subscribe by clicking on this floating logo to the right of my head. Ring that bell so that freedom will continue to ring and give me a thumbs up if you like what you saw. Lastly, as always, thank you for watching.